Whenever you see something about Kramer's rule, always remember that we're going to be taking determinants. So here we have our matrix where we want to find the solutions for X and Y. And the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take that matrix A and find its determinant. I'm just making sure I write all of our work here. And whenever we're taking the determinant of a two by two matrix, I like to draw my little fish kind of looks like this. And so that's just telling me that I'm multiplying the four times the negative two. And I'm going to subtract that from the product of negative two times the negative one. And there's my matrix and that number is going to be very important because it's going to help us solve for the solution. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the determinant of something that I'm going to call a sub X. And that's basically the matrix a, but now we're going to substitute the X values or the X coefficients with our solution. Check this out. So look at that matrix up on top. This was our matrix A. And what I did is I removed the coefficients for negative four and I replaced them with the 20 and the 10. And so now we're gonna go ahead and take the determinant of this. So once again, 20 times negative two, that's negative 20, or I'm sorry, negative 40, minus 10 times negative one, and that's gonna be negative 10. And if we simplify this, this is going to be negative 30. And so now we got one last determinant, and that's going to be determinant of A sub Y. So hopefully you can kind of take a guess as to what this is going to be. It's a, essentially just like the determinant of A sub X, but now instead of removing the X coefficients, we're now going to do that with the Y. So again, if you just look at the matrix A, we remove the coefficients for the Y, so the negative one and the negative two, and we replaced it with the 20 and the 10. And now we're gonna go ahead and take our matrix, or we're gonna take our determinant here. So four times 10, that's gonna be 40 minus negative two times 20, and that's gonna be negative 40. And now we have the determinant of 80. And this is gonna help us solve for our solutions of X and Y, and this is where we use Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule tells you that the value of X is going to be the determinant A sub X divided by the determinant of A. So if we find those values there, it's going to be negative 30 divided by negative 10, and we get 3. And so Y is going to be the same way, the determinant of it, or A sub Y, the determinant of A sub Y. I should probably write determinant there, so that way I don't confuse anyone. So the determinant of A sub Y over the determinant of A, and that's 80 over negative 10, and we have negative eight. And so now we can say that our solution is gonna be three, negative eight. So we're gonna go ahead and try this with the three by three matrix. So here we have our matrix, so we're gonna solve for the values using Kramer's rule. And the very first thing that we wanna do is we wanna take the determinant of A. And hopefully you are familiar on how to take this, but I'm going to kind of walk us through this. So every time we're taking a determinant of a three by three, there's this little shortcut here. Some people are probably going to have different methods, but most people, what they like to do is they rewrite that matrix A, but now we're going to go ahead and copy the first two columns. And to take the determinant, it's going to take a little bit more of a process because we have to do a bit more multiplying, but it's still going to be the same idea. So we're going to start off on the top left corner there with the negative one, and we're going to multiply all diagonally. And that gives me negative five. And now we're going to continue. We're going to start with the negative five. So we're moving towards the right and we're multiplying diagonally. And then we're going to do it again. Start with the negative five on the top right corner there. And we're going to go ahead and multiply diagonally. Okay. 
And now we're going to go ahead and subtract and we're going to do the same thing. But now we're going to start on the bottom left and multiply diagonally there. And continue that process. And now we're going to go ahead and simplify. And so now we're going to go ahead and take the determinant of a sub x. So if you recall the other example, it's just the same way. We're going to take the determinant of the matrix A, but we're replacing the x coefficients with the solution. And if we're taking the determinant, we have to go ahead and copy the first two columns. And now let's go ahead and take the determinant. Sometimes you got to really concentrate with these. It takes so much effort. Let me go ahead and make this just a tad smaller because I want to make enough space for our A sub Y and our A sub Z. Let's go ahead and do that. And that's, I'm hoping that it's still visible for everyone here. Okay, looks good. All right, so let's continue. So remember, we, now we want the determinant of A sub Y. And that's the matrix A, but now the Y coefficients are going to be replaced by our solution. I think the hardest part of doing these types of problems is just keeping track of your values, making sure that we're not missing one sign or something's a positive when it should have been a negative, and also multiplying things correctly. So here I go just copying the columns. Now let's have some fun taking the determinant. There's a determinant of a sub y. We got one more. Let's go ahead and copy down the matrix of a and then substitute the values of z. We're almost going to finish here, and I just want to take the time to thank you for being here, and please consider subscribing to this channel, and let me know what else we can cover. All right, got the determinant set up. Now let's go ahead and multiply. All right, awesome. There we go. So we found determinant of A, determinant of A sub X, determinant of A sub Y, and determinant of A sub Z. And now let's just go ahead and write the final solutions on the right here in red. And according to Kramer's rule, X is going to equal to the determinant of A sub X over the determinant of A. And if we find those values, it looks like it's 300 over negative 150. And that's negative 2. The, de the value of y is a determinant of a sub y over the determinant of a, and that's 300. Nope, that's not 300. Looking at the wrong value, I was looking for a sub x. That's going to be 450 over negative 150, or negative 3. And last one, z, is equal to the determinant of a sub z over the determinant of a, and that's going to be negative 450 over negative 150. And that's going to be three. So now we can say that our final answer, our solution, how should we put this? Let's put it down here on the bottom. It deserves a bit more space, but I just want to make sure that I, you know, everyone can see everything on the screen. Negative two, negative three, three. That's our solution there.
So as you can see, Kramer's rule is extremely powerful, but it takes some time and it takes some effort to make sure that we're organized with our work. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if there's anything else that you want me to review, please do let me know in the comments below. I'll see you soon, math nerds.